Precious Perfume from Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. It was the final week of Jesus' life on earth, and Mark 14, verses 1 and 2, tells us how things were going. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him, Jesus, by craft, and put him to death. So the chief priests and the scribes were trying to figure out how they could take Jesus and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Even though Jesus went into Jerusalem every day, he left the city to stay in Bethany every night. And you can see on this map where Bethany was. Bethany was a village a few miles from Jerusalem. Jesus' beloved friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary lived there. It hadn't been long since Jesus had brought his friend Lazarus back to life after Lazarus had been dead for four days. You can imagine how happy and excited Mary and Martha must have been to have their brother back after he'd been dead. They had already loved Jesus dearly, but now that he had healed their brother, their love for him was huge. What could they do to express so much love? How could they possibly thank him? There were other people in town who were grateful for Jesus, too. One man, Simon, had suffered with a terrible disease called leprosy. And because of that, he'd had to leave home and stay away from other people. But Jesus had healed him. So now he was living in his own home once again. And Simon opened his home for a special dinner in Jesus' honor. The Gospel of John tells us that Martha and Mary and Lazarus came too. And Martha helped serve. Lazarus ate at the table with Jesus and his disciples. Jesus and his disciples came into Simon's house and reclined at the table along with Simon and Lazarus. Now you need to understand that in Bible times, women usually didn't eat with men. Women didn't usually even enter the room where men were eating unless they were serving food. But at this meal, a woman did enter. From John's account in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, we know that it was Lazarus' sister, Mary. Mark 14, 3 tells us what Mary did. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. You need to understand something else. In those days, perfume wasn't a liquid you sprayed from a bottle. It was a thick, scented oil. It was very expensive and not something people used every day. Sometimes, perfume like this was saved for many years and kept in a small jar made out of alabaster, a kind of stone that's like marble, and the jar was sealed with wax to make it airtight. People save perfume mainly to use as medicine to celebrate weddings or to prepare bodies for burial. So when Mary entered the room, broke open a bottle of expensive perfume, and poured the perfume on Jesus' head, she really got everyone's attention. So Mary was breaking the rule of the culture. She also was giving up something very expensive maybe the most expensive thing she owned. Mary's action was a big way of saying, Jesus, I love you and thank you with all my heart. Not everyone liked what Mary did. Mark 14 verses 4 through 5 tells us how some of the men at the table reacted. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. 
The book of John tells us that the one who made the most noise about it was Judas Iscariot. But Jesus' reaction was entirely different. He told the men, Don't harass her. Leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing for me. You will always be able to give money to poor people, but you won't always have me here with you. She did all she could with what she had. In fact, by anointing me in this way, she has begun to prepare my body for burial. What? You would think that everyone would have stopped and said, Jesus, what do you mean, burial? But it seems that Jesus' words just whizzed right past them. Jesus made a promise about Mary's beautiful act of love. This is what he said, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. That's Mark 14, 9. We right now are fulfilling that promise. Mary gave her best. She risked the disapproval of others. And showing her love for Jesus was the most important thing to her, no matter what. Mary loved Jesus so much that she gave up something very valuable for him. The perfume Mary used was much more expensive than this. It was the very best she had. And when we love someone, we try to find ways to show that person how we feel about him or her. What makes us love some people so much? Well, it's usually because those people showed love to us first. And here's our verse. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19 Let's say it together. We love him because he first loved us. We love Jesus because he first loved us is what it means. Mary loved Jesus so much because he had shown his love for her first. He had done wonderful things for her and her family. Jesus has done wonderful things for us and our families too, hasn't he? Jesus loves us too just as much as he loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He knows each one of us, and he cares about everything that happens to us. He even came to earth to take the punishment for our sins so we could be a part of his family and live forever with him. Jesus' amazing love for us makes us want to show our love to him. So let's think about our story. Mary poured her perfume on Jesus just a few days before the special Jewish feast, Passover. And during Passover, Jews sacrificed a lamb to remember how God had saved them from slavery in Egypt. Remember in Egypt, they had put the blood of a lamb on their door and then when the angel came, it passed over their house and didn't go in and kill the firstborn. So they kept the Passover feast each year to remember how God had saved them from slavery in Egypt. That was one of the plagues, and that was the last plague. And Pharaoh said, go, 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 leave my country after that plague. And Mary's actions showed that Jesus was God's Passover lamb. In just a few days, Jesus would die to save everyone in the whole world from their sin. And you know, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So, we love him because he first loved us. And we can show our love to him by our offerings, by the things we do, by the people we love, by the people we help. Let's love Jesus. Let's love Jesus with all our hearts. The time was coming to celebrate the Passover. Every year, the Jewish people gather together to remember a special event that happened long ago. When God's people were slaves in Egypt, God did great things to rescue his people. 
The Pharaoh saw God's power and authority, and the Pharaoh let God's people go. God had used Moses to lead his people out of Egypt and to the Promised Land. God did not want the people to forget that time, so every year the Jews had a feast. Many Jews traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate. Six days before the Passover feast began, Jesus went to the town of Bethany. Bethany was near Jerusalem, and Jesus' friend Lazarus lived there with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus went to his friend Simon's house for a meal. Jesus was reclining at the table when Lazarus' sister, Mary, came to him. She had a jar of very expensive oil. Mary broke open the jar and poured the oil on Jesus' head and feet. Jesus' disciples were very upset. They thought Mary had wasted the expensive oil by pouring it on Jesus' feet. The oil was worth 300 denarii, about a year's pay. One of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, said, she could have sold the oil for a lot of money, and then she could have given the money to the poor. Judas did not say this because he cared about the poor. He said it because he loved money. In fact, he was a thief. They told Mary that she had done the wrong thing, but Jesus spoke up. Leave her alone, he said. She has done a very good thing for me. Then Jesus explained, you will always have people around you who are poor, but you will not always have me. Mary has poured oil on my body to get it ready for burial. Jesus said that wherever the gospel was told in the whole world, people would also hear about Mary and what she had done. Pouring the expensive oil on Jesus was not a waste. It was worship. By allowing Mary to anoint him, Jesus showed that he is more valuable than anything. Jesus knew he would soon die for sinners, be buried, and rise from the dead on the third day. Stories of the Bible. Jesus is anointed at Bethany. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were getting ready to celebrate a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. Two days before the Passover, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon. Hey, 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 come on in! A man who had previously had leprosy. While Jesus was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful jar of expensive perfume. She broke the jar open and poured perfume over Jesus' head. Jesus' disciples were upset when they saw this. They said, what a waste! It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. What do you do that for? So they scolded the woman. Ah, uh, hold on there. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered. 